I'm busy, I said. You always say that, she said. Her voice cool. Anyway, you don't seem busy. Let's hang out. No thanks. Her smile faded. What happened? You seem so upset. There was no way I was going to tell her about yesterday. I'd only talked to her a few times before. And it was mostly just stuff like, I can't teach you, uh, I'm sick, I'm sick tomorrow. Then again, what I know has come from a wealthy family, like Max. Your parents are miners. Supposedly, they once found a cave loaded with diamonds. I could have asked you for a loan, perhaps, but no. I don't want to be in debt to a stranger. I just want to be left alone, I said. Okay, is that possible? She nodded and zoomed off in, into the trees. She ran so fast in her black outfit, she looked like a, a blurred shadow. I thought, I thought, wait, I thought I saw tears on the corners of her, of her eyes. Or did I imagine that? What's with that strange girl? I thought. Come, come to think of it, I've seen her a lot recently. At the blacksmith, near the wall, in the hallways at school but always from a distance, watching me. Seriously weird. Why was she following me like that? Whatever. I whipped out my shovel, and within, a 30, and within 30 minutes, I had gathered half a stack of sand. Sunday. I had my Sunday all planned out. Step one, feed the slime. Step two, go bug Steve and Mike on their day off. I tossed Jello a, a bread loaf, grabbed my shovel, and ran out to the and ran out the door. Hopefully, my parents won't discover my new pet. Within minutes, I was at Steve's house. He and Mike were both there. Mike was seated at the table, looking a little angry, or at least not happy. Steve was hunched over a furnace, his face blank, as if he was thinking very hard about something. I decided to break the si the silence with the friendly greeting. Hey guys, how's the forest? Before villagers often ask something like, how's the weather? But lately it's, how's the forest? Before, right. meaning that weird forest in the east. You know, I didn't ask this to try to get Steve, to, to get Mike and Steve to tell me about their secret. It was just a greeting, I swear. The two out outsiders glared at me. We still can't tell you anything, Mike said. So stop asking, buddy boy. That's fine, I said. I have a secret of my own. Steve looked up from the furnace. What secret? Oh, nothing. But I bet it's more interesting than a bunch of trees. Mike, Mike smirked. He'd be surprised. Suddenly, Steve pounded the furnace with his fist. I can't stop thinking about pizza, pepperoni, Cheese, well, I'd give you anything for some black olives. I'm not a fan of olives myself, said Mike. I stared at both of them. What are you guys talking about? Her. Mike gave me a pitting look, as if I wouldn't understand a thing, even if he explained. Steve ignored me. There was a feverish gleam in his eyes. Those mobs, they're so smart, he said. This is how they get up. They get you. They made us afraid. Hold us up in this village. Limited our, our food supply. There was an awkward silence. Then Steve, then Steve spoke up again. Every day it's bread, bread, bread. And if you're lucky, steak and potatoes. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you talking about it, Mike said. Steve stepped over to the crafting table. A huge amount of food items had been piled onto that massive chunk of wood. Pizza, he said. What about pizza? Is it possible? Maybe if we arrange the bread, the bread loaves like so. Mike rolled his eyes. Dude, no tomatoes, no tomato sauce. Burritos? No flour, no tortillas. As they talked, naming an exhaustive list of foods I'd never heard of. I said nothing, totally confused. How about an omelet? Steve said. We've got eggs. We've got mushrooms. 
and I close his eyes again. Again, I've already tried that man. Every possible configuration. Eggs with more eggs. Eggs with milk. Eggs with mushrooms. Even eggs with a, with a potato. Steve gasped. Almost with dice potato chunks? Who does that? Wait, what am I, what am I saying? I'd settle for that. You're really freaking out, dude. Chill. How about cheese? Nope. Butter? Went through five buckets of milk trying to figure that one out. The desperation in Steve's voice was heavy as he said. Apple pie? Mike shrugged. It should be possible, considering the fact that this world has apples, pumpkins, and pumpkin pie. However, no apple pie. However, no apple pie? We can't even have toast! They even dry toast without any butter. We have loaves of bread, right? But the furnaces won't toast the bread. And swords won't cut the loaves. No matter how many times they try, the bread just crumbles. More silence. Mike and I exchanged worried glances. Steve scratched his chin. And yet, they have ice cream. These villagers. Many flavors, too. But not the ones I like. What kind of world is this? Mike rose up from his chair and looked out the window. A Minecraft world. You know, I've been thinking about quitting, Steve said. Quitting teaching and building a redstone robot. And what, it, what would be the purpose of this redstone robot be, Steve? A food crafting robot. Night and day, it set random types of food on the crafting table until it finally found a new recipe. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard you say. Mike turning back to the window. Mike said, turning back to the window. Even a Marky could build something like that. And the guy's a crafting master. Steve's eyes lit up. Marky, yes. If only Marky was here. He'd know how to craft pizza. He's not here, Steve. Accept it. Till we figure out a way to get back to Earth. It's potatoes and bread. I'll teach your golem to craft food for me. No, you won't. Yes, I will. It will craft while I sleep. Mike groaned, but Steve just laughed. Supreme pizza, here I come. Yeah. Needless to say, I didn't hang around there much longer. I understood what was going on, though. Steve missed earth food, stuff like pizza and hamburgers. Stuff, things I've never eaten before. I guess they must taste amazing. I still don't get it. What's wrong with our ice cream? Maybe you try the na that nasty creeper crunch. It, it's really, it is really gross. Later, I went back to the park with Stump. That's where the ice cream shop is. While Stump and I got ice cream, I felt like someone was watching me again. I didn't see anyone, though. Monday. Dear Diary, I like you, Diary. I really do. But I can only assume you're going to suffer the same fate as my record book. Torn to pieces. Crumbling into nothingness. You see, Pebble and his friends shook me down today. Took everything I had. From my sword to my lunch emeralds. Well, almost everything. Thankfully, you've arrived just before they grabbed you, Diary. But it's only a matter of time. What can I do? There are three of them, and they're a lot bigger than I am. Stum tried to help out. I warned him not to. He's probably next on their list. Even though Stump is the seventh, seventh highest level student, he's still a threat. Worse yet, the porcupine guy has apparently joined Pebble's crew. Porcupine saw Pebble pushing me around and figured he'd be better off with the punks. So all the top students, they're taking sides. You're either on my crew or on Pebbles. And it's easy to see which crew is the strongest. I saw Cerebella hanging out with Donkey. She gave me a guilty look. I'm sorry, she said later. I'm sorry, she said later. It's just, if I keep talking to you, they'll harass me too. 
you know? I just want to graduate with good scores. I love to wait. Yeah, it's fine. We're still friends, right? Sure. I totally understand, bro. I'm not better. Team Run is a sinking ship. Tuesday. I didn't bring the diary to school today. Didn't bring anything except a carrot. My lunch. A single carrot. Not two carrots. Not a carrot and an apple. A single carrot. That's poor, okay? Go ahead. Beat me up. Take everything in my inventory. Well, today, Team Pebble tried just that. Give me that carrot! But when they grabbed me, I immediately whooped out my carrot and ate it as fast as I could. They struggled to take my only food item away from me. I chomped down faster. Little pieces of carrot went flying everywhere. Om um, nom, 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 nom. Get that carrot! Grab it! Well, I managed to eat it before they took it from me. You little noob! Shouted Pepper. Even as they, even as they, even as they roughed me up, I smiled. It was a small little victory today. They couldn't do anything to me. The only item they could have taken, I ate right in front of them. Good game, noobs. Wednesday. Oof. Oof. These sounds came from me. These sounds came. From, those sounds came from me. Team Pebble walked up and said they weren't going to steal anything today. They were going to give me something today. They gave me a pumpkin, all right. Jammed it over my head and began punching me. Don't just stand there. You're a pumpkin zombie, little noob. It's combat training. Oof. 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 I don't want to write much today. I will get my revenge. I can't feel sorry for myself. The things they did to Max were even worse. I really wish he'd hurry up with this, with that big idea of his. Thursday. You like eating things, do you? Let's see if you can eat this whole cake! That about describes my day. By the way, that wasn't their cake. It was Stumps. Something he made in Crafting Basics. Max, please hurry up. Friday. Pebble didn't try anything today. It's because a new rumor has been spreading through the school. In fact, spreading through the in entire village. Supposedly someone spotted an Enderman in the village. A friendly Enderman who only wanted to trade. He was looking for a potion. And not any potion. A potion of water resistance. This isn't something that prevents drowning damage, but damage from water. Never heard of such a potion, and neither has anyone I've talked to yet. Doesn't mean such a potion doesn't exist. Now here's the thing. The Enderman is willing to pay 500 emeralds for a stack of potatoes. No, for a stack of such potions. 500 emeralds. This Enderman is rich. Apparently. Of course, everyone in the village started freaking out, especially the kids at school. We've got to find out how to craft that potion. We've got to make sure before the Enderman returns to the village. With that many emeralds, I can buy an enchanted diamond sword. Like that. Forget the trees. The Enderman was any. The Enderman was all anyone was talking about. As rumor goes, the Enderman is a world traveler and has a dream of becoming a professional swimmer. The problem with that, obviously, that water is like acid to, uh, to Enderman. They can't even be out in the rain, much less swim for any length of time. But this potion of water res resistance would fix that, I guess. Finally, my dream will come true. Glug, 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 glug. Saturday, the rumors were flying even more today. People kept talking about what they were going to do with their massive pile of emeralds. Once they discovered how to brew that potion, that girl Breeze came up and asked me about it. She keeps, wait, she keeps talking to me every chance she gets. What is her problem? 
Later, I ran into Max. He apologized for being late. While we stood there in the streets, we heard kids nearby talking about the Enderman. Max gave me an evil grin. Suddenly, I understood. He was the one responsible for those rumors. That meant the rumors weren't true. The Enderman didn't actually exist. The world's traveling Enderman was just another one of Max's creations. Like the Pooh Screamer. Yes, Max was at it again with his crazy tales. And this time, I didn't mind them at all. It's like this. Everyone's going to be crafting potions for at least the next few days. Experimenting. Trying to figure out how to make that special potion. And what do you need to craft a bunch of potions? Empty glass bottles. Supply and demand, buddy boy. Supply and Supply and demand. Max went around the village and dug up every sandy area he could. I dug up a bunch myself in the park. We figured we probably have at least 75% of the village's available sand. At least. They're easy to find stuff. When people run out of bottles, we'll have no op option but to come calling to us. We'll be able to charge anything we want for them. I have to admit. This plan of Max's is pretty brilliant. Sunday. This morning, I finished reading Earth's Golden Rules Handbook. At the end, there's an advertisement for his ne next book. The Ultimate Legendary Handbook. Mobs hate him. This top warrior had discovered one weird trick to beat any mob. Learn the secret technique that ninjas and the government don't want you to know about. This handbook has already been banned in seven villages. Being a skeleton used to be so easy until the ultimate legendary handbook came out. For all the mobs out there, if you run into a noob and he's carrying a copy of the handbook, well, just run, just run. Skella Bonington. Tired of being a noob? Do you want to be a pro? Read on for a sample of the ultimate legendary handbook. Written by Yurf. Ultimate legendary secret one. Use a sword to attack mobs. Once upon a time, there was a noob named Mike. Mike was a total noob. It was almost... As noob as Steve the noob was the mayor of noob town. Mike was so noob that he didn't use a sword. He thought using a stick as a weapon would be almost as good. Take that and that and that. Hmm, I guess that this sword could use some en enchanting. Ultimate legendary secret too. Even Mungo is afraid of the ultimate legendary handbook. Mungo scared. Oof. Make tiny men too strong, so Mungo become farm men. Mungo sad now. Mungo no like farm work, and brown things no taste good. But easier than eat tiny men. Your f book make tiny men so smart. Okay, bye. Mungo go eat pie pie now. Ultimate Legendary Secret 3. Yurf is way cooler than Steve. I used to be a bad warrior. For example, I once hugged a creeper because it looked sad, and I thought it needed a hug. But not any longer. After reading the Ultimate Legendary Handbook, I'm now a combat teacher. Yurf taught me everything I know, and now I, and I'm so thankful for that. Sometime, someday, I hope. To be as amazing as yours. It's not possible, but I still try. Steve. Ahem. Runt here. My first thought upon reading this advertisement was, What? Steve wouldn't say something like that. You've clearly made that up. And I think that this will be a good stop to the video. Page 60. Um, I will continue.
uh, page 184. I'm in the next video. So, um, goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, uh, I don't know what to say.